Hi guys, welcome back. How are you doing? Hope you are doing very fine. So, we have created a lot of tutorials uh, describing Legendary and how to play against it. But uh, what about World Class? I have uh, pretty much only created a video and that was when the demo was out. And uh, I kind of wanted to, to create a new one in order to show you some of the ideas and some of the tricks and tips that you could use uh, to win against the uh, AI. So the world class AI. So obviously the world class AI, it really depends, also really depends on what the opponent play, the opponent's players are. So depending on how, uh, on how good the player of your opponent uh, are, of the opponent AI meaning, um, depending on how good those players are, uh, the difficulty of the AI actually changes a lot. So you will notice that if you play against better players, the difficulty will be higher. So, and that would be because uh, better players will be able to uh, block your attacks, for example, uh, easier, or they will be able to pass better, or they will be able to shoot better. And so in that case, you have to be more careful and be wary about that all the time. And also uh, be better at shooting, passing yourself also. Generally speaking, though, there are some uh, things, some principles that you should follow whenever you're playing against um, a pretty good AI. And um, I, have, I have created videos before that explaining the ideas behind it. And obviously it also depends on how you play as well. Uh, the, um, do you prefer to play with uh, a lot of passes? Do you, do you prefer to play with a target man in the box? Do you actually pre prefer to play with um, um, faster players? This really changes the way you should, you should be approaching the game. And I kind of wanted to mention a few things, uh, depending on how you want to play. You can obviously change the way you play while you are playing the game. Maybe you find that this kind of, uh, this kind of play is not the best for you, the, your current one, I mean. And you want to adjust, you know, learning a few more new things. Or you're just bored of the way that you were already playing and you want to learn something more about the game by, uh, by playing, you know, with uh, new strategies and new ideas. So you notice here, I scored a, ga I scored a goal and um, I just conceded very uh, quickly. This happens a lot uh, with FIFA, but uh, you should always be, you know, keeping your cool and uh, try to come back. Because um, the AI is... Um, notorious for scoring immediately after they concede so just keep your keep you know playing your game and um, you will probably come back uh, very soon uh, obviously you'd, you'd have to know some of the principles and that's what we're going to be discussing here so let's step back a little bit and while we're watching the game unfold i'm going to explain some things about how you need to play against the ai and what you should be doing in order to be able to to score a lot of goals and win most of your games First of all, you have to recognize that uh, playing against the AI, uh, against the team of the week, for example, uh, even let, even if you are playing against Legendary or even Ultimate, is not the same as playing against uh, against the AI in squad battles. Uh, squad battles tends to be tougher, uh, for the most part. Uh, it's probably like maybe 30 to 40 percent tougher, I'd say, than a normal game. So you you should expect to get tougher games on World Class than you than the ones that you are actually getting uh, on um, team of the week games for example and um, a tip would be to actually not play a uh, world class games and instead bump it up bump it up to legendary in uh, squad battles because it's almost the same difficulty and it's not really worth it i feel so just just aim for more points instead if you can't build um, world class uh, actually yeah if you can't build world class for sure you can beat uh, legendary uh, at least if you can do it um, uh, most of the times so Let's talk a little bit about what you should be aiming with your team first. So, what, 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 what kind of players do you actually want to be aiming for? So, in FIFA 18, in its current, in its current state, after the latest patch, which was a little bit uh, weird um, about the game. Um, look at what I, I've missed here, wow. So, um, after the latest patch, especially after the latest patch, it's really important that you get agile players. So when you are building your team, make sure that you go for the very agile players. And that means players that have um, high speed also, like high pace. So players that are, can accelerate fast and players that, ha that have a pretty, pretty, 
a large, a pretty big um, uh, sprint speed is uh, very, very important. Make sure that you go for players who have uh, good balance um, and who are agile, uh, w with whom you can uh, dribble uh, well. It's important because first touches in this game are a little bit weird, so uh, it's it's important that you go for players that have high, uh, for, um, you know, high dribbling um, skills. Uh, for sure, and also passing is pretty important in this game because a lot of passes actually tend to to find players that to try and find players that you are not really aiming for, and uh, they may be s too slow at times. Um, a the AI is very good at interceptions, so you should definitely go for players that have uh, high passing attributes. And uh, in terms of what I would recommend for the most part, is um, definitely go for the pace players first. Like the first thing that you should be looking for in your new players is um, is the um, the pace attribute. Go always go for pacey players. Second and after that, I would definitely look for good um, passing skills. Really important in this uh, in this game, you should be able to pass well. And the third the third thing that I would look for is dribbling. Uh, super important for controlling the ball. Uh, in this F FIFA in FIFA 18. Controlling the ball is not as easy, and uh, again, because the AI, if you're playing squad balls, the AI is better uh, than what it is in normal single-player modes, um, like the Team of the Week uh, challenge, you, you need to have uh, very, uh, very good um, technicians, really, in your team. So just go for that. And uh, make sure that all, all your players, in fact, have chemistry styles. Extremely important. If you haven't watched my video about uh, chemistry, uh, that was the second video in the Road to Expertise, uh, definitely do so. You will learn a lot of things about how to um, work with your chemistry and how to build your team so that it has the best chemistry and so that your players can actually perform their best. Super important when you're playing against, um, you know, when you're playing Pat. So once this is done, another important thing is our custom tactics. And I've also created a video about that that you can find in my channel as well. Custom tactics are extremely important, especially in this FIFA. Again, because the AI tends to mark very, very high up the pits and they tend to be uh, really good at marking. So you have to find a way to break their defense. And um, by having your players move a lot, by having your players uh, try to find, to, to take better positions in the open space, you will actually make more chances, and as you see here, that was an, an example. So custom tactics, tactics and individual player instructions are extremely important in this FIFA. And what, what you should be aiming for is to have your strikers get behind the defense, extremely important. It's probably the most important thing. And if you're having trouble with defending, defending you can also keep some of your players back while, you're attack, while your, you know, your opponent is attacking so that uh, it's tougher for them to score against you and it's uh, um, more easy for you to defend. So it's easier for you to defend. So that is extremely important. And tactics in this FIFA um, are really, really important. The way you set up your team matters a lot. It may not look like it, it may not feel like it initially, but uh, the more games you play, the more you will see it. And uh, the, whether you want to play with uh, like two strikers or you want to play with two defensive midfielders or one midfense, defensive midfielder, that doesn't matter so much. It's, uh, it's really a style of play. Uh, you can definitely go for, for both. I have tried playing uh, for, with, uh, you know, with wingers. I've also tried with playing, I've also tried playing in pretty much in the center of the pitch. And um, so far, my favorite type of play tends to be the center of the pitch. Um, I'm not playing so much on the wings because I'm finding that uh, crosses are a little bit weird this uh, after the, the pads. I mean, before the pads, they were it was rather easy to score, but I'm finding it a little bit difficult to score after uh, the pads. And so I go for um, pretty much a play a play in the center of the pitch, as you see here, for example, in the center of my opponent's uh, half. I'm trying to find space over there, and obviously I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna open up space in uh, the, the sides as well. But as you see here, I tried to to do an early cross and it didn't go so well. So I'm not so far so much for crosses as as I am for uh, for passing. But again, it's a matter of your personal style. Another thing that you should bear in mind that when you are deciding whether you should be cross, you should be aiming for crosses and target men, is what are the players that you actually own. 
like uh, for instance here I'm I'm having uh, gray uh, Andres gray and um, that was a terrible shot and I'm also I'm also having uh, Jesus um, so it, these are both players that have high pace and um, I, as I mentioned earlier, I would definitely uh, advise you to go for players of that kind. But if you can go with uh, Batshuayi, for example, um, or, you know, Benteke maybe, if you actually like to play with these players, go ahead. But uh, you'll have to have, like, pacey wingers. Uh, Pedro, for example, is uh, one of them. Uh, you, you, or Son, maybe, uh, for the left side. You, you really have to have pacey wingers in that case and try to find the header of your um, players. I'm not so so much for this style. It's not my my favorite type of type of game, and I don't select to play like that. But uh, if you like to play like it, just go for it. I mean, it's it's important that you have fun. Uh, just make sure that you have the proper players for the strategy that you go for. Really important to actually play um, play the game with uh, with uh, with players that are intended intended for a specific purpose. So. If you haven't, uh, if you're playing squad battles and you want to have a, a little bit of an easier time defending, definitely go for selecting um, the legacy defending instead of the tactical defending, and you can switch that in the controller settings before you start the game, and it, it will just uh, be stored for your next games. So definitely do that. It makes it easier to defend if you want to gain more uh, coins eventually in the uh, squad battles, and you want to get better positions in the in the end. Uh, this will definitely help you a lot, this kind of uh, defending. Super, super important. So, other things that I would definitely recommend when you're playing um, against the AI, whether it's uh, World Class or Legendary, is um, to learn a few dribbles. It is important to learn some of the dribbles that the game has to offer. You don't want to learn all of them, definitely. I mean, there's too many of them and most of them are rather useless. Or I wouldn't say useless, I would say a little bit superflu superfluous. I mean, um, they're not needed so much. I mean, you could learn, learn them, they're fancy, they can spice up your game. But frankly, they're not really needed. What is needed, though, is a few dribbles. And that, uh, these, those dribbles are definitely the ball roll, uh, the fake shot, um, the, feint, the body feint. Uh, whether it's backward or backwards or forward, um, these kinds of dribbles are definitely needed. And um, I'd say, yeah, that like the fake shot, ball roll, and uh, maybe the, fa the the backwards feint, for example, are by far the most important ones. Uh, these are super super important dribbles uh, to learn. And maybe the verbal spin is also one of them, which I will be creating a tutorial, a separate tutorial about. But um, I do have a body feint tutorial now that uh, that I would recommend that you watch. Uh, the body feint is a little bit of a weird dribble, it's not so easy to learn, it's, uh, it is a little weird, so you may have a little bit of trouble to learn it, but uh, just uh, look, you know, watch the tutorial, watch the video, and I'm pretty sure you'll get the hang of it. I'm actually describing, describing some tricks on how to learn it quickly, which you may not have thought of. So this will definitely help you a lot with your with the procedure, with the process of actually learning the dribble and be able to execute it in all areas of the pitch. That's uh, super, super important for, for these kinds of dribbles. And uh, the fake shot is another one for which I haven't created a tutorial yet, but uh, it's, it's on my list and it's probably going to be the very next one after this uh, video. So um, it is also important to uh, pass a lot in FIFA, especially in FIFA 18. And uh, since... Um, in FIFA 18, uh, the AI is actually pretty good at keeping their position and uh, pretty good at marking and their players tend to be faster and quicker than yours some, sometimes. And that's because the AI does cheat. That's a known thing. I mean, it happens. It's part of the difficulty. Uh, in order to find the, the needed space to even take a shot, you need to pass a lot. Because um, passing creates an imbalance and or aims to create imbalance in your opponent's uh, defending structure. So whether this is about their midfield or their general defense, really. So by passing a lot, you actually force your opponent to change positioning. They, you force them to, to, mark the, to mark you with their players. Uh, you force their midfielders to change position. You force their defenders to go upwards, uh, up the pits. And uh, so that uh, results in their players not having the best positions, not having their original positions. And that is an uh, opportunity for you to find more space uh, find better passes, find more crosses, and uh, eventually even score. So that's why it's important to aim for the for passing, aim for a lot of passes. 
and um, also because uh, you know they as i mentioned earlier their players are very very strong regardless of their actual attributes sometimes in especially in squad battles just because of the difficulty they all their players feel like messi so you definitely need to be going uh, for a lot of passes uh, like as you see here i played like the one one two pass pretty much so i i gave it and then i went for the attack and i used l1 here to instruct my player to immediately take the run and as you see here that ended up in a one one with a keeper and a very very easy shot hopefully that gives you a few things to think of uh, when you are playing your next uh, fifa games especially if you are struggling against the ai let me know what you're struggling with i mean if you have any troubles and uh, how you're doing what's your personal record are you finding finding it easy to beat the AI? Is it tough for you? Can I help with it somehow? So please let me know. I'm obviously going to be creating more tutorials for our road to FIFA <laughs> expertise. And uh, thank you for watching this one. And uh, there's going to be more very, very soon, guys. Thanks. Thank you for watching, guys. Please remember to like the video and subscribe. This will help me with creating more and more videos and tutorials about uh, FIFA 18. Make sure that you have a fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Bye!